If there are any questions, feel free to ask. And by the way, let's open our next presentation. Jérôme Delacroix, you are going to tell us about the international nature of the Frogans project, and you'll talk very concretely of OP3FT in China. Over to you. Thank you, Jean-Emmanuel. Well, we are moving to, towards a new step in the dissemination of the Frogans technology, but it's always n nice to go back to fundamentals. And for us, the fundamentals are our bylaws that say that OP3FT needs to work in disseminating and spreading the Frogans technology in an open-minded way without encouraging one group of users versus another and taking into account all web surfers in the world. And among countries on this planet, there is one called China. And this is what I'm going to talk to you about. We set up a subsidiary of OP3FT in China. Alors, euh, donc, euh, un bref rappel. So, a quick reminder. La technologie Frogan, c'est une technologie. So the Frogans technology is a global technology. It's a new layer of the internet, as we said at the beginning of this meeting. It was developed by OP3FT in a neutral and independent way. And it's totally geography neutral. And it's neutral in terms of which web surfers it represents. So now the question is why China? So let's talk about China and the internet. China has 700 million web users, so that's huge. But more fundamentally, China represents a different way of using the internet. Totally different ways, focused on mobile devices and quite powerful specificities in the way they enter site names. As Chinese have a non-alphabetical language, they have very smart ways to enter the URLs with specific keyboards, with visual or graphic systems like QR codes. So there are many specificities which make internet in China and so, of course, Internet in China is connected to all sites around the world, but Internet is specific in China. That's why we need to look at it in a specific way. So it is specific from a linguistic, technical, usage perspective. And then there is a will in China to be included in discussions about Internet standardization. and legal experts, engineers, academics, they all want to contribute to the development of the Internet of the 21st century. So for all these reasons, we felt it would be important to focus on this uh, destination. So this is not new, just a few reminders, 2012 creation of OP3FT and 2013, we started looking at Internet in China. First, we looked at documents. We wanted to understand what was going on, what were the specificities. But we also established contacts, and we took a trip to China in 2013. We had a mission in, we organized a mission in Beijing to meet with the main stakeholders, like the W3C in Beijing, the ICANN Bureau in Beijing, and Chinese players like Konak, which is a registry. And before us, there were great precursors, W3C, ICANN, they all understood it was important to be present in country. So that was 2013, that's when we had our first contacts with local stakeholders. Then in 2014, and this was very concrete, we actually signed an MOU with an Asian 
Arbitration Center, ADNDRC, which is one of the two large, two first arbitration centers that can work on dispute resolution for Frogan's addresses. That's the Pan Asian arbitration firm. They have four offices, one in Beijing, one in Singapore, one in Kuala Lumpur, and the other one in Seoul, I think, if I'm not mistaken. So that's very concrete with real actual commitments on both parts. That was back in 2014. And based on all this, we clearly saw that in order to encourage the dissemination of the Frogan's technology in China, that couldn't be done from Paris. I mean, this is why we started thinking about developing a bureau of OP3FT in China, which is the OP3F3 Jongo. So we went to the, we attended the Chinese Internet Conference in June this year, along with Philip, and we understood the specificities of what the Chinese call Internet Plus. That's in integrated the Internet in all areas of the economy and of life, more generally speaking. We also understood better the specific regulation of the Internet in China, and we established contacts. We stayed in China over the summer. We met with academics, lawyers, local developers, and we really came back with a strong desire to set up OP3FT in China. So we had to modify our bylaws in order to allow the OP3FT to set up a local branch in another country. And now I'd like to tell you more about what we're planning to do because OP3FT has made a decision to set up this branch in Beijing. And this branch will have various missions. First, it will have to monitor what's going on in China on the technological and economic stage. Second, it will need and make resources available for Chinese developers, so resources in Chinese adapted resources with the right format, taking into account cultural specificities that we're not necessarily aware of. So we need to have Chinese teams and multicultural teams as well. So they need to be open both on the Chinese culture and on the international culture. Then develop parts of the uh, Frogan's technology. So we will have developers in China, working on certain topics, and we're planning to have a team of 15 to 20 people on the long run. Of course, not overnight. It will take time. And we're thinking about opening this branch office in sometime mid-2017. That's the timeline we have. If you'd like more information about this topic, you can read our presentation on our site and we have a document that shows that talks about the objective of OP3FT, our roadmap, what are what kind of objectives we have in China and it's all available in French, in English and in Chinese. Do you have any questions? No? Thank you. <coughs> The question is, the plan to open up the local antenna of OP3FT in China, has it been submitted to public consultation? As I speak to you right now, we haven't done it, quite simply because the procedure of call for comments for public consultations will start only once OPCR OP3FT uh, is open to 
internet users, which is not the case today. Exactly. As I explained earlier, the public consultation procedure will only begin once FCI is open to internet users, which is not the case as yet. Right now, we have opened not to internet users, but let's say we have a priority period, and we're in a test phase. So we are not yet in a phase that will call for public consultations. Another question. I have two questions. The first, to find out if we could establish operations in China and to develop internet technology in China. Do you need any government authorization? And the second question about the Chinese themselves. The first question, to develop internet technology, do not need specific authorization at this stage, normally. I must say that the Chinese are very much in favor of everything that can be brought from abroad that can help China to place all of the internet, provided that the technology is also developed in part on the spot and preferably by Chinese engineers. In the second phase, of course, because our technology is one where we publish content, and that could potentially raise questions because the Chinese authorities very much seek to make sure that published content comply with certain standards. But that's more up to future editors, future publishers of Forgan sites. For the time being, there's no specific barrier to development of Forgan technologies in China, especially as at an early stage, we integrated certain mechanisms that will reassure authorities as regards content. Because when a publisher wants to publish a Forgan's site, the publisher of that site should specify to whom the site is intended. Is it intended for all internet users around the world? or for internet users in a given country, or for all internet users apart from those in certain geographic zones where there would be restrictions. It's not to make the Chinese pay, but it's to just to be respectful of the different national legislations. The advantage for us is that we designed that in light of the foreign technology at a very early stage. We have been questioned about that already through the various meetings we have had. For the time being, we have a green light and there are no obstacles that have uh, emerged in particular. And what about uh, resolution of addresses? Are you technically forced to have uh, servers in China for the operator? Well, we anticipate that. That is a possibility. At this stage, it's this yet too early to say. So here's my, my second question about the Chinese. You spoke about 700 million Chinese internet users. For me, there are about 2 billion Chinese in China. The others do not have access to the internet? Or how does that work? My other question bears on their knowledge of languages written in ASCII or Latin languages. You said that there were many ways of working around the problem to have access to URLs. But how many people in China really master Latin language and who can enter URLs in Latin? Well, two million Chinese, two billion Chinese is a bit exaggerated. The official figure is one point three billion, certainly more. Because all births are not declared. There are 700 million internet users officially due to the disparity probably between cities uh, and uh, provinces. The internet users are mobile internet users essentially. Most Chinese um, have access to the internet via their smartphones. 
That's one of the advantages of four guns, as a matter of fact, because we are very well equipped for that. The other advantage, and this brings me back to the linguistic aspect, is that four guns technology is multilingual and can manage uh, addresses in Chinese. You should know that in China, there are many Western sites and services that are not accessible. The large social media like Facebook, Twitter, and Google. And one question that we often hear is whether or not it's a problem for Chinese internet users. But the Chinese have already developed equivalent services. WeChat, Weibo, and so on, but in Chinese. So that's the first point. The second point relates to content. China is known for the great digital wall filtering some content. The question that is often asked relates to whether or not the Chinese don't feel at a loss in not being able to have access to all the wealth of foreign content. But in actual fact, most people in China are not worried about that because anyway, they're interested in consulting content in Chinese. This is why it's very important for OP3FT to be there on the spot, to be able to fine-tune, improve its uh, uh, control over or its mastery of the linguistic aspects and to create contacts with an ecosystem of Chinese uh, publishers who will be the driving force for developing focus technology in China, more so than Western or foreign publishers. Thank you so much. Other questions, please. Have we already identified developers' clubs in China whom we could contact initially as we would elsewhere? We have identified, well, for the time being, we have identified one, a club with 10,000 developers, more or less. There are many others, of course, so just at the start. It's only beginning. So we'll have to speak with these developers' clubs at local level, these local developers' clubs. Thank you so much. I can see no other hands been raised. Please interrupt me if I'm mistaken. I'd like to thank all the speakers, Jerome, Philippe, Julie. So we have uh, seen in these uh, presentations some of the major stakes with respect to the switch to the spread of broken technology. In the coming months or coming weeks, in some cases, things will materialize. And we will find out much more about distributing Frogan technology once it has started. I'd like to thank all of you, all of the speakers.